It's Friday! It's seven o'clock. My name's Danny. It says it at the bottom there. This is Easy 8, an online painting club. Welcome for another week of getting some of your models done. I hope you've had a brilliant week. I've had quite a productive week myself. Um, I've done a few things here on the broadcast to make it a little bit smarter, a little bit neater. I've still got a lot of work to do. I'm always learning new things. Uh, but once again, and as always, if there are any problems at your end, music's too low, music's too high, can't hear me or Kyle properly or whatever, then please just give me a shout uh, in the live chat and I'll see if I can correct it on the go. And that applies to anything that you see. So hopefully it should be a really smooth night. Um, I'm not alone. Uh, obviously, I've got Kyle with me here this evening. Here he is. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. There we go. He's here. Um, I hopefully have increased your volume, Kyle, so people might yes. be able to hear you. I've been listening back to uh, the playback uh, throughout the week. I've been like, oh, Kyle, your voice is really, really quiet. I always hear you loud and clear, um, but when it goes out on the broadcast, it's always a little bit tinny and a little bit distant. So um, hopefully everybody will be able to hear you. The music's not too loud um, and everything's going to go through nice and easy. What sort of a week have you had, mate? Well, I've had a busy week. It has been hectic. Uh, it's been a very long week, but we made it through to Friday. We're here for Painting Club. That's the main thing. Um, yeah, just happy. He's happy got his models. Club. Yep, I've got my models. I they've all them. been they've all been sprayed. Yeah, <laughs> carrying on from last week. I was really um, happy actually, having looked at them in the daylight with Excellent. the job that got done last week. So last, hopefully, last dry brush and then some detail work. Uh, Brilliant. So we could have. The end of today could see another unit finished and then i'm moving on to the elites Ooh, changing up some paint styles maybe fantastic with that. cool yes. well um with that in mind after the interval after our intermission um we've got a community spotlight um that i went fishing because of things that you were saying and the way that you paint and the themes that you paint and whatever and i've got quite a lineup so if you are just tuning in uh, we are here for two hours we're here from seven to nine gmt and uh, we'll have a break uh for about 10 minutes in the middle um, and when we come back we'll do a little bit of community spotlight and we'll also do some shout outs for people with their own private businesses it's been a few weeks longer than i thought it was actually car it's been eight weeks since we've done a community spotlight yeah no one it's wants to months. show us their models two, two months. months yeah right um but we've got some stuff to show today uh, and it's quite a special one and uh, i'm really looking forward to kind of showing everybody because the person who i've been in contact with i've been in contact with today only briefly but i had a really really nice and inspiring chat uh, and it's right up your alley so yeah that's that's gonna that's gonna be really cool uh, we've got some guys in the live chat oi oi hi guys from jeff uh, one of them's kyle hi hi kyle <laughs> hello hi. and adrian good evening y'all <laughs> yep nice brilliant we got a nice view count already, but we were here before you. <laughs> I think Kyle says that you were waiting. I couldn't see that lobby. I don't believe him. <laughs> if you are new to the show, Easy 8 isn't a tutorial. It is simply a painting club. It is a place for you to come and enjoy the company of others painting live right here, right now, right then. Um, but you can always watch it back on playback if you want to. Uh, what's everyone working on today? Are you no, trying to take no, you, no. you try to try to take his job? <laughs> He's not having it. He's not having it. Comment. I'm already typing. <laughs> you've, you've angered him. What is this? Oh, See, look, our regular, our regular viewers know the script already. <laughs> <laughs> unscripted script. It is, a, it is an unscripted script. unscripted script. If you are if you are new or people. you can't remember, then don't forget that we're not just here on YouTube. We are also on the likes of Facebook and Instagram. And on the screen just there, you'll notice that um, our little platforms have popped up there. Uh, but more importantly than that, please subscribe to the channel uh, because every little bit helps. Uh, we've actually had some more subscribers during the week as well, which has been really, really helpful. Every little bit um, helps us become a little bit better gets us a little bit more known and uh you know helps us make the community bigger for all you hobbyists out there doesn't matter what you're painting as kyle always says you could just be painting model airplanes or you know a canvas doesn't really matter or perhaps you just like the company get involved come along in the live chat say hi don't be a stranger or if you do prefer to sit there quietly then that's absolutely fine um so yeah what <laughs> what did you say to him uh, don't you steal my line yeah <laughs> I've got one job, one job on this podcast. <laughs> I'll leave it open to the viewers to decide how well you do that job as well. <laughs> I've got some news. My zone throats are finished. Yay. Yeah, I finished my zone throats. Well, I've kind Come of on. finished them. I've kind of finished them. I have finished the actual m model itself. 
um, but I've just got to do the bases on them. I wanted to leave the bases till today on the show because I've not actually ever really completed anything on this show. It's always been I've got near to it or I started something, and then I finished it in the week, and then I've put that up on Facebook, etc. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty confident tonight that I'll get these bases done. Um, I've got all the um, the kind of the features like the, the cracked earth and the, excuse me the soil on there um so today i'm just kind of making them look neat neating them all up tidying them all up and uh, i'm making another acid pool i've also got my Khan effects which is my latest um uh, feature uh, which is actually we're, we're going to be talking about that a lot with you know the topics for tonight as well because i always like to bring a topic to talk about yeah, yeah so that's that's what i've got here you're still on your intercessors um yeah, last, probably going to finish jobs. them yeah, should be. I'm just having a little look now. There's one, a couple of them that just need a little bit more red dry brushing. And then I should be on their final coat. There's some detail work. Um, and I haven't got my chopsticks with me tonight, so I can't do their helmets. But that's something I kind of sit down and do in a batch when I've got a load to do. So not yeah. too fussed with that. There's something that I want to bring up, Kyle. Uh, and probably yeah. a lot of the viewers may or may not have noticed this yet. But it looks like you're sat in front of a window. The daylight is artificial, <laughs> but it looks really good. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I finally, I, I, a bit more. Eat, you know, we've been trying, as you've said as well on previous podcasts. You know, we try and improve here and there. All the uh, time. My improvements uh, are only small due to budgetary uh, allowance, but I finally crack my lighting situation. I feel uh, I can see my models a lot better, even if it's not uh, coming up on on camera uh, as a big change but yeah the change to my light in here is fantastic so that's what you need happy, it's not about yeah. how we see your models it's about what you're getting done the, the, yeah. you know something that exactly. afflicts you know is the ethos of this show something that afflicts hobbyists and, and war gamers more than anybody i think is that we end up buying loads of stuff putting it all together and we turn up with gray armies and the only way that you're really going to get through that is by painting them and improving the conditions to paint in as well. So, yeah, well done for getting some light or sourcing some light. Well done. That's that's cool. And you got your chair last week. I got my chair. You said it was a oh. you said it was a garden chair, but at the end of last show, what everybody else didn't see and I did see was it's a fold up camping chair, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> fold up camping chair. Really I can't. I can't. I can't really? laugh because my workbench is literally a piece of like chipboard <laughs> <laughs> braced across humble, two chairs yeah humble beginnings it's this is what yeah. we'll remember in years to come yeah so absolutely so <laughs> the kind of things that i wanted to talk about before we get stuck into painting um i just like to i want to bring this up because maybe some of you out there don't know i mean but there's probably a lot of warhammer enthusiasts out there that probably do already know um some developments from games workshop uh we all know um if you've got any shred of interest in Warhammer 40,000, you have seen the Astartes um, shorts, uh, episodes one to five on YouTube um, by a YouTuber who unfortunately I can't remember his name. Oh, um, <laughs> Mr. Pederson is his name. Can't remember his first name. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, that was obviously one thing I forgot to write down here. Uh, but we all know the series. It's amazing. You should definitely go and check it out if you haven't seen it already. Or even if you have, go over there and give that guy another view. Subscribe to his channel. Make sure that it's his channel as well. And, you know, not one of the uh, ones that kind of spread it out. Give that guy some love. He has been hired by Games Workshop to produce animation shorts for them they have spotted him they spotted his talent uh, and he's now on board and he's not just continuing with the starties he's doing other things with them uh, i don't know if he's leading a group of animators but he is working with a team of them over there um at gw so that is absolutely fantastic and it's nice to know those people that have got ta that have got talent like that that games workshop are now opening up to um basically spotting that and then bringing them in the fold and making them an offer and that must be really exciting he's got a little blog out if you if you got any um yeah, any forums that you that you follow on Warhammer 40,000 it's probably going to be all over there I can put up links if you want so that you can go and see it but he's super excited uh, and they're actually also doing another um, set of animations about the tower called the Exodite there is a teaser trailer if you just type in Exodite uh, into YouTube then uh, it'll probably be one of the main things that comes up and it's all very very exciting so well done mate I can't remember your name sorry but it's really exciting it's, it's really exciting yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm super thrilled for them yeah they are and and, th and they are inspiring because they really um hone in on the the, the feel the, that kind of visceral realism that gritty yeah grim without being over the top 
but it just kind of shows you the efficiency uh, that the Marines master. And that was, yeah, and it was just so well done. It was really good. And so it's, it's about time. There's, I think there's been yeah. just such a niche for that. There's such a market for it. The hobby We've... has only grown and grown uh, yeah. with the lockdowns and things like that. Uh, a lot more people, as we spoke before, that you wouldn't expect to kind of get into these sorts of hobbies that, that we've enjoyed for a long time. And yeah, there's such a, I think, such a market for some yeah. t- TV shows. For and it was, it. it was never his intention was to get spotted and work for someone. He was just doing it because it was something that he was enthusiastic about. And that just goes to show you that everyone starts somewhere and you build yourself yeah. up. Maybe one day you'll end up having an offer that you just can't refuse. So, yeah, yeah. hopefully... We'll end up working for Games Workshop as box art artists. Uh, uh, <laughs> Games Workshop, if you want to, of course. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk about before we get stuck into um, you know, what we're painting here is the Hostile Galaxy is another group that we affiliate with. Um, it, Ruben Garaby is one of the people I speak about um, most weeks. Uh, he is over in the States, over there in Texas, where he runs the Hostile Galaxy. Originally started up as um, an online magazine. Uh, and how we got connected was he saw one of the things, I'm actually acid pools that I'm doing today, and asked me to do a tutorial for the magazine. They ran a couple of issues. It was really good. It was, it was really, really good. And it was really successful. But with the world the way that it is uh, at the moment, um, him and his partners that were kind of working on it um, haven't had the time in the pandemic around their busy lives uh, to go out and seek all the content and bring this together. So what they're doing now is they're just pulling back on that um, magazine for a while or then maybe they'll change their content for the future. So what they're doing now, the Hostile Galaxy is now just a group on Facebook, which you can get access to through the Easy8 Facebook page. Let's have a little look over there. It's one of the links that I've got up there all the time. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm constantly um, sharing all of the uh, links that uh, Ruben and his friends over there keep on putting up because they put up a lot of um, game um, stats, reveals and all sorts of stuff that you might want to know, rules, queries and FAQs. And I'm going to share those through the Facebook page just to make sure that uh, the Hostile Galaxy get its share of the love. Um, And so you guys can always see it all the time. So that's the Hostile Galaxy. Uh, Ruben, if you're watching this now, I know that you try to tune in whenever you can or watch it back on playback. I hope you're doing well. I hope the weather has improved over there because Texas froze a little while ago. It was terrible. Um, he says he's been really, really busy, and I had a chat with him the other day, and, and he is super, you know, excited about just being able to carry on whenever he can. So, there we go. Those are the things that I wanted to talk about at the moment. I've just realised that I'm getting a lot of uh, frame rate drops at the moment. It doesn't seem to be any affecting anything on my side. I've just got a couple of alerts and alarms. If you are experiencing any problems, just let me know. I don't know what's causing it, but uh, I will see what I can do to affect it if it is causing you problems. We've had a couple of comments going in. Jeff Lazy has said, uh, what if you just paint all your terrain grey to match your army? Just saying, <laughs> yeah, brilliant idea. Why not? <laughs> I, can't, I can't argue with that, can I? Uh, Adrian has said, talking of TV shows, uh, GW are in real life uh, developing a TV series based off of the Eisenhorn, Eisenhorn series of books. Yeah, I had heard of that. And I don't know if um, that is anything that this gentleman with Astartes is going to be uh, working with. I assume not because it was probably already quite far in its stages of development. Um, but there's a lot happening and it's really exciting to know that... I mean, I suppose for a long time, Warhammer and, and all of its you know, war gaming friends we're kind of held back in a social group that being nerds um but to be a nerd nowadays is, is kind of the cool thing and it's, it's kind of coming up as its own little establishment i'm really fond of that it's nice to know that everything kind of gets a look at nowadays and it's nice to see it going a little bit mainstream so yeah i'm excited to see what the future holds anyway anything you want to talk about before i take us over to the workbench kyle Oh gosh, I, I did, uh, and it's all gone out of my head as I started to paint. So I'm sorry, as mate. it comes back up, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll chuck it in throughout the show. <laughs> cool. Over to the workbench then. Here we go. So, looks like nothing, but actually, I've got one, two, <laughs> three zones ropes. Yeah, you can't quite Yay. see them. Yeah, they're all here. So, I like to do their bases a little bit differently, but with a general theme, and that is. Uh, a, an alien terraformed landscape uh, the idea is, is that they come into their world um they're going to win obviously uh, and they've just consumed everything that's biological so there's nothing left anymore no nutrients in the soil no color left in it um and the only color that's really on them now at the moment is these little pools that i've made here and uh, this is the one i did last week and i kind of finished them off throughout the week um super cool 
it's like a little reclamation pool of anything acidy. Um, people get chucked in it, anything gets chucked in it, it all gets reduced down to a bio soup, and then they get sucked up by a giant alien destroyer to a giant alien spaceship, and then they fly away like a space locust. So I've done that one. This guy here is, is pretty much done, to be honest. Uh, I've neaten up the edge of his base. It looks all nice and tidy. I might do one more coat on the outside of that just to kind of make it a final. Is this the one, sorry, that you did last, uh, on the show last week? Yes. Ah, oh, it come up really nicely, is not it? Thank you very much. Yeah, it's. I'm getting a little bit better at it, and I say what I'm going to be doing with the Carnifex models—a larger base on there. Um, so here's the size of that one, just to compare. Um, I've got some liquid um, resin, UV-activated resin, and some splash effects I haven't played with yet, but I'm kind of waiting till I get the Carnifex done, and I'm going to do a, hopefully a, a nice thing with that. Nice little display, have a lot more acid on there. Maybe some Gosh. creatures swimming around in it, stuff being dragged into it, perhaps, and. Um, I will hopefully use the UV resin for that and see what difference it makes. It might be really good. It might be useless for what I want it to be. But it's nice to play with something different, right? Yeah. So what it's I've got fair. on this one here, on this particular one, this is the first of the zone types I did. Um, he has no acid on him. I don't want him all to have acid. I want him to be a bit different, a little bit different. Uh, but th there's like this kind of soil on here. Uh, around the cracked earth. I just wanted to kind of break it up a little bit and have something different on there I want to paint it. It's a bit flat the color um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it yet So there's still stuff to do with them, but for all intents and purposes these these bad boys are done They need a varnish so in a minute I'm just I just did a little coat of dark green on this one here while we were waiting to go live I'm waiting for that to dry and I'm gonna give them a quick dusting with some matte varnish That is going to completely destroy the glossy sheen on this acid pool, but one one quick coat of gloss over the top of that will bring it back up again there are about three or four layers of gloss varnish on there that adds just a little bit of depth to it so um, when you're kind of looking at it it's, I don't know I did a lot of tests when I was running it on my broodlord uh, model and I did a tutorial say with with Ruben uh, and it went out on Facebook on one of the forums out there and it went global in a magazine here for me I did lots of tests with it and the more layers of gloss I did didn't really do much to it apart from make it look really smooth um, but it did seem to add that kind of illusion of depth, I suppose, probably because it, it has actual depth, right? Paint has a thickness. That'll so, yeah. Um, so that's what I'm hoping is going to happen with the, the UV resin. Is when I put it on a bigger base, I'll have more of a, um, a canvas to kind of play with. Um, and I'm hoping I'll be able to kind of lend some depth. I'm going to put some cork down, make it look a bit, um, <laughs> not like cork flooring, <laughs> bit, of, <laughs> bit of lino for my tyrannies to walk on, but you're going to make it look like some broken rock surfaces and things like that. And I've, I'll hope we have a little bit of depth to play with as well. So that's going to be really, really fun. Really looking forward to that. Um, I have been looking for different colors to play with, um, uh, like neon colors and things like that, but I just can't find any of those, um, greens at the moment. Uh, I am going to be playing with my lava. Perhaps I can give the lava oh no i won't do it now i've got i've got the things that i want to do tonight i was gonna say maybe i could put some uv resin on the uh, on the lava base i did a little while ago here is my kind of x with my kind of x what i've been doing uh as when i've had a bit of time just been blocking the colors out on him he's a bit of a beast to paint as well as being on the tabletop um because there's just so much to him but the reason i'm doing him is because when i put him together some years ago now probably looking about 15 years ago I hashed it together and I did a really terrible job and I know I've said this a couple of times but I was really ashamed of it and I didn't really want to bring it on the show but that's what this show is all about is about getting through your stuff right and you don't learn if you don't have a go and if you don't share um, and he had on the back of his carapace over here I hadn't quite put them together and the glue had set and it was all off kilter and there were some bits where the plastic hadn't lined up properly and they were kind of separated and it just looked an absolute mess I tried to badly fill it it looked even worse so I've removed all of that I've carved a lot of it down with a knife um, and I tried to fill it it didn't work so well so what I did just earlier on today is I got a couple of sculpting tools and this kind of plays into what we were saying last week, isn't it? Is it you know, the right tool for the right job. I've got some sculpting tools here because uh, well, my dad's a sculptor. It kind of runs in the family, but I'm useless at it and I like to have a go at everything. But I've got all this stuff and I'm, I just don't practice often enough. So I've got some silicon rubber head brush things here. They're really good fun to play with. Um, and I've got some like sculpting things and was it like dentist tools here uh, this one here has got like a really good sort of angle on the head and it's quite pointy and what I was able to do is get it into the gap where a lot of the plastic sits and I was able to kind of just scratch a line like a big thick groove 
Um, cause I know that if you've got like a line that you want to fill, even like something like welding, you want to make that, that hole bigger so that you can fill it easier. So I basically just kind of scratched this big groove into where the, um, the seams were lining up and I put a little bit of um, putty in there. That is drying at the moment. And I, as I was handling it and doing some more stuff with it, I did pull a little bit out. So I've got a little bit more work to do on it. But basically these chimneys on its back, they're supposed to like release toxic, you know, miasmas and things into the air because they're just unfriendly creatures. But they have these big joins and it just looked awful. You can see this one here is quite terrible. It looks quite offline. Um, so I've put a little bit of um, filler in those. It takes a long time to dry. So it's not going to be ready for tonight, really. Um, I can feel that it's still a little bit tacky as I run this tool over it here. But that will dry rock hard. And it will be sandable. And I can carve it. I did a, like a little spine on the um, back of my biovore a few months ago. Um, and my sculpting skills are yet to be desired but it works it looks really good and added a, a little element to it that was quite personal um so yeah it's been blocking out the colors on him i also decided that i was going to put these little um features on the ends of his guns because they're just quite flat there's there's nothing to the ends of these guns and they're supposed to be biological they're creatures themselves that are symbiotic with the the carrier beast that kind of affects itself and i thought what what is a what does a biological gun have rather than a barrel well it has probably like a tube, a pipe, an artery with a sphincter at the end. And I know that a, a yeah. couple, a couple, yeah, I know a couple of the bigger models that they've got have those actually sculpted on them. So I thought rather than just drill the barrels out like I normally do, um, just a little bit before the show, I put a little bit of um, putty on the ends. Again, my sculpting skills aren't that great, but I have managed to put a little line in there to make it look a little bit gross. And I'll paint those up. Um, make them look appropriate and as it starts to dry or maybe when it is dry I can carve a few more features into them and make them look a bit more oh, just, it just gives the guns a bit more substance um, yeah just gonna have a look at the Tyrannifex model on what is called the rupture cannon it's a massive gun and on the end of that it's got um, what looks like a sphincter or you know a biological opening on it so yeah that's that's the Carnifex and tonight what I'm going to be doing between the paint setting on the um, on the zone throat bases is I'm going to be just going back to this guy and just blocking those colors out a bit more what I've done with the carapace or in all the various places of it um, is I've done basically the top layer and then there's the edges to go around so the best place to show you here is on the leg so you can see that the the gray is blocked out on there but then on the underside, you can see that there's a lot more to kind of go in. And that just takes a lot of time. And like we say every week, take your time, make it worthwhile. That's that's what got the time, the, you know, the kind of fix in the state in the first place was me not taking my time. So, yeah, that's that's my lineup for this evening. More comments going in from Adrian. Uh, test that resin on a similar material to your kind of base uh, and some resins can generate enough heat to warp plastic. Yes, you're right. They can. Um, I don't think this one is going to be like that because it is um, it, it dries by using a UV torch. Um, or you could just leave it in sunlight. So it's not um, a thermoreactive one like you would use for molding or casting your own things. Those do generate heat. You can feel it through the mold. I've done a lot of uh, work with molds in the past, working with my dad, Jeff, who's obviously watching now. Um, if you actually want to go over to BevelLionCreations.co.uk, you can go and see his full range of resin things over there. Um, that sort of resin, basically, uh, you put two chemicals together, you mix it, and it has a certain amount of life, uh, depending on which one you buy. They can last longer or not. They can last like a minute or they can last half an hour. And basically, together, they create a thermo, an exothermic reaction, and then that sets it. That You can actually watch it happening before you. This one doesn't have that. This is literally you have a little torch. I forgot the torch here with me. No, I, I had it out a couple of weeks ago basically shine it on it in a couple of seconds it's dry uh, but i do have like uh, a sheet of mdf here that i'm going to try it out on i've got some mdf bases as well and obviously this one here is plastic um so yeah it's going to be fun see what happens with it because you know it might open up a whole realm of new ideas oh there we go do you, know, do you know what i am really annoyed at myself about this week no go go but on there was, there was one thing i wanted to do in preparation for this show I want what? to go get myself a couple of banana beers. <laughs> uh, got my banana beer. I, I was going to have a banana before the show. Um, 
but something else required my attention so i had to go off and deal with that first and i totally forgot about it um, and i was thinking about it all today because while i was prepping earlier on and i was doing a little bit of painting on the convex my hands were shaking like a nervous wreck but <laughs> in in the space of last week between the last show and, and this show um <laughs> i've had quite a lot of private messages coming through on facebook um all different links to people on youtube uh, telling me how to get over the shakes um and there's been some really interesting things out there most people just kind of bracing their hands on boxes that lift off the top of the worktop um which i can't do here because it just creates a too much of a clutter for anyone to see anything on the worktop here um but yeah thanks ever so much to everybody that sent those messages in watch this video watch did this any, video watch this video did any link take you to banana beer no, no we are that link we are we, we are we are that we are that people thank you very much if anyone no, out there makes a banana beer if you'd like to i can link it for you yeah. <laughs> excellent We've not actually done any science on it, but I reckon <laughs> it's, it's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Oh, just knock everything. That paint is almost dry. God, I must have put that on quite thick because they're still drying, and these paints are dry you, quite fast. Are you working on anything in between this evening whilst you're, you're working on your bases? Have you, or are you just focusing on them? It's literally the bases and the carn effects, so I'm just going to be nice. doing a little oh, bit of course, green yes. on them. Yeah, and then I'm just going to be doing the edges on the, on the grey blocks. Um, well, actually, interesting thing. I, I was exp playing around with some dry brush um, colours for highlighting the yellow yeah. um, because I wanted yeah. the yellow to be a bit more standy outy is the word to look for because if you compare it to these fellas, they're quite dark in comparison to these on, on my camera. It's actually looking about the same. But the kind effects, trust me, is really quite bright. Um, so I wanted to kind of give them a little bit of lift in some of the details. And I tried different yellows, like brighter yellows, and it wasn't really working. I was like, oh, that's, that's a bit of a shame because that would have been like the simple solution. So I tried a bit of um, Screaming Skull, which is basically bone white color that are slightly off white, which I use for um, various undercoats like on the brains here, for example, and then I put um, crimson wash over the top. Um, so I use this quite a bit, and I just did a very, very light dry brush. <laughs> it works excellently. Um, so excellently, is that a word? It is now, excellently. So yeah, that's I, I did dry brush them a little bit, and it's picked his details out quite nicely. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see what he's going to look like, see what he's going to come up. I just want to save him. I want to, I, I'm, I'm really embarrassed to have him in my collection at the moment, and it's a shame because the Khan effects is such a great model. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, so, Jeff, go Jeff's on. Just point out, Jeff just pointed out again that your cousin is a brewer. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know my cousin is a brewer. Uh, banana beer isn't one of the things that they do, but, you know, if, <laughs> if everyone's crying out for it, then perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give him a shout. <laughs> Um, so, do you remember um, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about there being a potential for a convention this year? Yes. More information on that. I uh, wasn't planning on talking about it today because I only just found out about it today, um, as is always the case. Um, but hell, here we are. We get some hypothetical release. Yeah. Um, it looks like that they are trying to go for November. Um, I can't remember if we said November. it was. I can't remember if we said it was November. Yeah, I can't remember if we said it was going to be November the last time we spoke about it. But I think there's a more. That there's more hope attached to it uh, now. Moment, oh, sorry, mate. Hi, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm. I'm losing you as well, and uh, I've got. My CPU is fine. I do have a couple of frame rate drops, um, but hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully everybody else can still hear everybody. Everybody fine. You're a bit crackly there. Um, who knows what's going on? Um, yeah. So November, uh, we're hoping to get. Oh, we're hoping. They're hoping to get Salute, um, which is one of the um, bigger conventions in the UK. We're hoping that it's going to kind of go ahead. I hope it's going to go ahead because I just crave human contact at the moment and to go and do something nice for the hobby will be excellent. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. If anyone's interested in going to salute that I, I certainly am. It's all very much up in the air at the moment. Um, watch this space as and when information comes out. I'll let the community know because it might be nice by that time of the year to kind of get the community that we've kind of brought up together to go and say hi. And go and see what Salute's all about. I oh, think fantastic. I think Salute is more um, designed for historical war games, but 
you know, I've been to historical war games conventions before and they've got a little bit of everything there. But hey, I'm into historical war games too. Let's go and have a little look, see what it's all about. So nice. I'll just be happy to be able to see some people uh, and get to meet some people um, that have been tuning into the show and things. It'd be fantastic to, uh, yeah, get some face time. Brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, mate. I can show people, I can show people that I don't always look like I'm really grumpy. <laughs> I promise. You, mate, you said it. You I'm, said I'm it last. You it. said it last week, and you were really upset about it. Oh. That you thought that everyone must think that you're really grumpy because you've always got uh, a bit of a arresting grumpy face. Um, yeah. you, Carl is like one of the happiest, lucky you know, go lucky people I know. <laughs> if you think that Kyle looks a little yeah. bit grumpy sometimes, it's not the case. He's all right. No, it's just. It's why it's just he's on the show. Face. It's why. It's why he's here. It's why. He, <laughs> It's, it's more my concentrating face and obviously I have to do quite a lot of concentrating on this show and it's not uh, it's not a good look for me I found out <laughs> bless myself you myself 20 seconds later going oh no smile yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> so um, I, I'm just I'm just waiting at the moment for a bit of drying time um, but I'm I'm almost done I, I did not set myself enough work for this evening so I think at the interval I might uh, have a little look at what I've got and uh, come up with a little uh, sort of second half project, I think. Yeah. For this evening. How Fantastic. did you get with? Because obviously one of the things I want to talk about tonight, if you've obviously looked at the uh, the topic list for today's show, you'll notice that mold lines is one of the things that I want to talk about. Because last week, uh, you had a mold line that you missed, and I wanted to know how you tackled that, basically. Um. So I, for that one, I already started painting, but I just went back with a um, scalpel, sort of hobby knife. And yeah. Just, just took it off there and then just dry back dry brush back over um, I find I find personally that the mold lines mold like taking mold lines off is what demotivates me to sit and put models together oh it's, it's, it's an like, it's a just, faff isn't it it's got to be done though yeah it has to be done and I can expect like no matter how you're painting it should be done but with dry brushing there's just no forgiveness you can't you can't lines. escape it you can't escape it at all no. Um, but I know I struggled I struggled with this unit actually because I was no not this unit this unit was actually quite good with mould lines it was I think it was my sanguinary guard there's so much detail on them yeah um, that it just really de demotivated me a little bit to sit there and put them together I really enjoyed the modelling like putting them together um, and playing around with positions and poses weapon swaps that kind of thing but uh, the actual yeah, sitting there and scraping mold lines. Uh, I've tried. I use files sometimes. I scrape with a with a hobby knife. Um, I've not. I've used the, the Games Workshop have a little tool, and I'm sure you could yeah, get it for about I've, a fifth of the price. Um, I've not elsewhere. used it or anything of its ilk, and I would actually be quite interested to know genuinely how good that thing is. Um, and I've heard nothing, nothing but good reports about it. But it's just I a piece of metal. It. Yeah, I used it. A friend had one, uh, and I was around there, and we were just doing some painting one evening, uh, and some, just putting some models together. And he had one, and it was it was so helpful. It was it really, really good? Was it? It was. I don't get why it's so much quicker and easier than <laughs> any other piece uh, of metal. Any other piece of metal, but because it it's not sharp, is it? No, it's not sharp. Uh, but it just removed straight away. Boom! Like I don't I get ran it. Over the mob lines <laughs> once, maybe twice, and they were gone. No, I don't get it. Uh, a friend of mine uses really, really fine grade sandpaper. Excellent. Um, I would be really interested to know what the community does for mold yeah. lines. Just let us know. Is it a hobby knife? Do you use a Stanley knife? Um, do you use this tool from Games Workshop or anything like it? Or do you just not care? Do not bother. Um, I'm well into removing any little detail like that whatsoever. I like to get rid of it as quick as I can. Um, and I've got better at it over the years. Like you say, Kyle, it is a, is a faff to do. Yeah. Um, and it, I don't know why, because when it comes to uh, making models and whatever, I find, like you're saying, the whole the whole thing of building a model i find really satisfying and all you've got to do is is consider the um the panther tank that i'm making at the moment where i've literally sanded every piece down um and i've just enjoyed everything everything about it and i've really taken my time like months <laughs> to do it it's sat here in front of me now um but when it comes to like doing little soldiers and whatever maybe it's just because there's you often have to do more soldiers than just like 
one or two. Um, may, missed the quantity of it, but yeah. It's so such time consuming work for so you, you don't see much progress. Yeah. You, you spend so much time and really you only notice it if you're looking for it. Yeah, Whereas, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's just time time to effort ratio sort of thing or effort to finish ratio. Just it's not great. Yeah. Oh, so Jeff says he uses the back of the scalpel blade, not the sharp edge. Yeah, I've I've oh, done that in I some. I use the sharp edge. I've done that in some cases. I've used the I've used the the, the back edge sometimes as well. Um, I realised that my zone throat has such a large <laughs> head that it actually gets in the way of what I'm painting. If you want to see what I'm painting in time, just let me know and I'll hold it up and I'll give you a better view. Um, the paint I put on there this time is is moved a little bit differently than it has in previous times. As it's going to dry, I'm going to kind of move it around a little bit so it creates a bit of a bit of a blend. Um, yeah, a it's, gradient. it has yeah um, it has it has run away with me a little bit here. I'm just trying to move into position. I'm not fretting too ask, much. Go I'm on. Just going to ask Jeff, uh, is there a reason you use the back of the scalpel blade in particular? It'd be interesting to know. Always interested in the whys people. Uh, the wires i think people do things i mean i i use it as well um i think it's just because it does exactly what that tool that we're talking about from games workshop does it being a not so sharp edge doesn't dig into the plastic but is enough to remove that yeah. comparatively tiny piece of plastic yeah, yeah. that's that's you. that's what i think it is uh which is why i think that tool is so successful yeah um i just yeah the grudge oh I yeah Yeah, uh, Adrian's just said uh, he's, he's going to take time with his Tiger II um, to get rid of all his mold lines, but he doesn't normally bother too much with his Horde armies because it does. There's so much to do. painting style on Horde. Yeah, there's so much to do, and depending on the type of Horde as well, that yeah. messiness and roughness to it almost lends to the look. It can do, Definitely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem I find with um, models is that often... I will make it not look that way because it's a model and people might can, can always assume and I'm one of those people I will often assume that it hasn't been done properly as a model so um, you could like do something on, a, on a, like a, a really small tank for example because it's so small and you're doing a lot of them you can't be bothered to get in there but you go like oh well, actually this this looks like it could be damaged and even if it is actually supposed to be like that often it looks like you haven't taken the time to clean up the model properly models aren't real they are not real tanks and they or they're not real whatever they are and often um i find that i end up doing things with them to make them look like models rather than try to be exact replicas when you scale something down be it battle damage or whatever it doesn't often translate so well so yeah i use sandpaper so i i yeah and I, i've got my sandpaper pack here i thought i'd bring it along to show everyone um because what i do is i i try to remove as much as i can with a stanley knife i got a couple this is one that i've got from I got it from the supermarket. Really easy to change out a blade, so you don't have to like worry about injuring yourself. Literally push this little device down here, and it just slides out. And then you've got two sides. Uh, blades wear out really quickly, um, so I like to have a Stanley knife over those those big long craft blades where you can snap the blades. They're just dangerous. I just don't use them. Um, they are useful for some hobbies, but I'm not going to get involved in that today. Um, so yeah, Stanley blades, they're a little bit more durable than scalpel blades, but I do have a scalpel as well. Don't really have that one here with me. I didn't plan to talk about knives, um, but the, I've also got replacement blades for those. They're a bit trickier to replace. Stanley is my go-to knife. Um, yeah, so as long as, you're, as long as you've got the knife controlled and gripped well, there, there's very little that you, that you can't do well, with the Stanley knife. But sometimes they can be too sharp. And like I say a minute ago, um, you can bite into plastic and, and create more damage um, than you're uh, than you're actually trying to remove. Um, one thing I have found is have an excellent pair of nippers. Um, so this is a pair that I bought a little while ago. Um, I also bought a pair for my dad too uh, as a Christmas present. Um, they're not the most expensive ones that you can get out there. These are from Redgrass Games. Um, and that I'm going to do a little um, reveal on these um, in the coming days. Um, not because people need to know how to use them, but just to kind of give them that little bit of attention because they're better than most other brands out there. Um, it's quite easy to damage them, but they 
are so <laughs> efficient that especially if your mold lines and your sprues are particularly good because it's a high class model then um, there's very little left over to remove so yeah have a good set of nippers as well but i bought uh, a pack of um sandpaper strips from amazon um if anyone's interested i can put the link up for the one that i bought i do actually have it saved in my basket but what i made sure of is that i had a good range of grades um so this one goes all the way from grade 120 the larger the number the finer it is you don't really want anything as coarse as 120 um for doing models now kyle you and i've done a little bit of maintenance work ourselves haven't we so we know all about gra grades of sandpaper um so i, I also should... use um 300 grit for cleaning down rivals <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right um 150 it's probably about as coarse as i would go but that's probably still too a little bit too coarse so that will bite into plastic quite quickly 240 is is probably where i'd start at that's fine enough but coarse enough to get rid of some of the most aggressive things on plastic plastic's really soft even though it might be quite hard to bite into with a knife um 240 is is still is still good enough and then it goes down so on and so forth i could be teaching everyone here how to suck an egg uh 300 uh 400 and then i've got some super fine stuff i've got some uh, 600 here barely feels like there's anything on it um and i go down i've got thousand it just feels like just it just feels like card yeah it feels like card uh but that's not as far as it goes it goes 1500 i, I don't think i've actually used that one <laughs> um 2500 and i think yeah 3000 um where there's just a couple of those at the end and you can actually see the the pattern that the adhesive is made i don't know if you can see that on the camera where the um where the grain has uh, is stuck to the paper you actually see that the, the the adhesive underneath it's that fine um i have used one strip of that before i used that on my first base that i did for the tutorial for the acid pool I did a couple of grades. I wanted to get rid of all that kind of bumpy texture you get on top of them, um, uh, Games Workshop bases. And I just went through a couple of grades and finished off a little bit of 3000 and it came out like a mirror. It was actually quite hard for paint to sit on it. Um, so yeah, I fill a lot of the gaps and things like I have been doing with the Carnifex with a, different, uh, a couple of different types of um, resins. There is obviously a milliput and green stuff. They are all excellent choices. If you get something like green stuff, I don't have any here with me, uh, but it, green stuff comes in in two colours. It comes in blue and yellow together. When you blend them, they turn green. It's the indicator to say that the hardener and the resin have mixed it thoroughly, and that over time that exothermic reaction is very very slow will dry over a couple of hours green stuff is really sticky so it sticks to what um surface you're trying to put it onto and it's generally the preferred modeler's choice um if you're going to have it where the where the two colors are joined cut the strip out of the middle because they're already touching they're already they're already hardening um and any good modeling supplier will tell you to remove that strip it only has to be you know as thick as a piece of paper in the middle but just remove that contact join you can buy green stuff where the two resins come in two separate coils and i highly recommend going to green stuff world <laughs> clues in the name right um to go and get the different they do different colors there as well that have different firmnesses and drying times definitely worth going and have a look at um i've got some uh green putty this one comes from green stuff world not going to go into it too much because i say i can actually do like separate videos for that but this one here has a, like a super long nozzle or i actually just take it straight from the cap um it's much more uh paste like so it's almost like a toothpaste um and you can mix this with water it's water soluble so you can actually brush it in you can use a tool or a brush to get it into the creases wherever you want it to go what it's really good for is where you've joined two pieces together, say like an arm in a shoulder socket, and you've got like a little um, line around the outside. You want that to disappear. Mix a little bit of water with a little bit of this and just apply it and it will run into it. And the water tension will just kind of bring that green stuff to the edges and it seals it over. It's not the strongest. So I was using it on the Carnifex and when I was sanding it, I sanded it away. So then I just kind of grooved it all out and I used something different. I use this stuff, Magisculpt this is bliss to work with when you get used to it it is really soft and really sticky <laughs> use a work mat like what i've got here like virtually every hobbyist has got a work mat like this um, i've got another one upstairs where i use it in studio two the living room <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, 
and I ruined that map by just getting the stuff all over it. If you have water to hand, if it's just like your, um, you know, like your paint water or whatever, just keep a little kitchen towel or something nearby, a little bit of kitchen cloth, and just just keep wiping your surface down. Stops it from sticking to it and then leaving deposits of it all over the place. Comes in these really nice tins. I like a sturdy tin good package that you can use afterwards there is so much in here i don't know if i'll ever get through it all like green stuff and all other polymer resins it comes in two pieces one is a really soft and sticky resin uh, you can literally put your finger in and scoop a bit of that out it's like really thick hand cream um but it's really really sticky uh and then there's another one. Oh, we get some hardener over here there you go. Uh, it looks quite oily. That one's a little bit tougher. It's like really tough clay. And you scoop out equal amounts, blend them together, um, and Bob's your uncle. It's it's really, really soft. So you add a bit of water to it again, water soluble. That's that's how I've been getting into a lot of the creases on the carn effects there. Um, once it starts to harden up, you can start to sculpt it a little bit more. It takes a really long time to dry. When I did the biovore, I just did like a little bit on the back of it, like an extra... Um, flare of spikes on them just to kind of make him look a bit nicer um i have to leave, I had to leave him overnight and i came back to him in the morning and they still need a bit more time so yeah just be aware of that once it's dry it's rock solid and you can carve it sand it do whatever you want to it so that's magic sculpt and then there's this stuff here procreate i bought this as a whim just because i wanted to try something different procreate is again polymer resin in two parts one is a resin one is a hardener this stuff is as hard as nails like even just trying to get i'm trying i'm squeezing now it's really hard and this one here is the actual hardener that is that's some tough stuff and what you have to do is again equal parts mix them together like you would any polymer resin and the best way I found about manipulating this one, it hurts your hands, is roll it out into thin sausages and then just kind of loop them up to like a rope so they kind of coil around each other several times and then just kind of sausage them and sausage them and sausage them. And a little bit of heat and a little bit of working with it makes it quite soft to work with. It dries rock solid, but it's really hard to work with. But it is the, um, I think it's like one of the, uh, the preferred ones for doing like high detail work for like claws or spikes or you know things like that um, so that's procreate it's a fantastic stuff but i really liked magisculpt and you can and a lot of people don't know this you can just mix them you can mix green stuff with this stuff if you want to you can add a little bit of milli putt you can put a bit of procreate with it you could even put the liquid green putty with it as well if you want to to make your own kind of blends don't be frightened have a go um, and when it dries you can carve it you can sand it and that's what i'm waiting for on the carnifex now is that i can just get in there i'm going to go in with a, a really fine bit of sandpaper and just remove those lumps and bumps and after that really if there's any kind of lines and grooves left in him then i'm just gonna just say sorry kind of effects sorry i didn't do you properly but you know life goes on <laughs> and then yeah that's Definitely that gotten better yeah it's um yeah i remember ended up in a youtube hole as i'm sure more than one of us has before uh, and i was watching someone sculpt with uh, with green stuff and they were just going through the different mixes so normally you'd mix 50 50 with parts of your the two different parts of your green stuff yeah um, but you can you can do it at different yes ratios, you can what you want if you Inci want more time to work with it if yeah you want, yeah and incidentally incidentally on the procreate packet on the inside actually tells you, you can't really pick up on the camera because my lights just bleed it out but it tells you the percentages of what you want to use for each one and how long it takes for it to dry hardness work life and then i kind of give some comments on there as well like on the colors that you should expect from it so uh, yeah procreate is really good for all those kind of extra things yeah you don't have to do 50 50 you can mix it in different things different ways if you put yeah. less hardener in it's going to be really soft it's going to take a long time to dry a long time to harden up it will it will go hard that reaction will take place um but yeah fun oh fill those fill break. those lines <laughs> right i'm gonna crack on with a little bit of painting on the carn effects now so i need to get my wet palette uh, how are you finding that are you been using it for quite a while now? Have you, have i have been yeah the one that on? the one that i've got is quite a cheap one it was a, as a gift from my partner when uh, when we first got together and she didn't really know what to get me she wanted to get me something for my hobbies bless her cotton socks um, and I, I absolutely love it it took me a little while to get into it um i didn't want her to buy anything really expensive. I'd be, you know, all the gear and no idea. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. It took me quite a while to get into it. Um, I had to go and watch some videos on YouTube um, from Miniac. He's got some really good um, 
uh, YouTube videos to go and watch. I just picked up the wrong colour on my brush. Well done, me. <laughs> um, yeah, great, great. Seamless. Yeah. Um, Which your car fix now is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I, I did that with the zone throws. Don't joke. Um, I think because it's a slightly cheaper one, it doesn't create that that good of a seal when it's closed, so it does dry out over um, a shorter space of time than what you would normally expect. Um, but it does create a good enough seal that the water in there will go bad if I leave it too long. So I do have to make sure that I come back to it every couple of days to open it, move it around, and give it some air, because a little while ago I opened it and it just smelled like you know damp water. Um, so <laughs> bear that in mind if you get a good one or a bad one uh, or whatever quality it is um, that they all will still at least trap some of the moisture in there and it will go a bit smelly um, but really it's it, it does me fine it's probably too big for my for my needs I don't use half the space in there but I probably haven't really got into it enough yet I've only really been using it for the Tyranids um, which is just a couple of colors my space marines that I want to get into are probably going to use the other side of it and have two, two different palettes in that one incidentally I had a, a message from one of our viewers Mike Turner who does watch us back on playback a lot um, so hi Mike if you're watching this now or later um, he actually got in contact with me and was asking me about um, the different uh, brands and you know reasonable qualities of them out there because he was going to go on the way back home and go and get one and I didn't hear back from him after that so I hope that you bought one it was a good one he showed me which one he was going to get I highly recommended it it was really good um, I did recommend uh, green uh, red grass games the same people who made my nippers um, but he said that he had one he showed me the one that he was gonna that he was gonna go and get, and it was just as good to be honest. That's the brush I wanted. So yeah, it's it's interesting to see other people kind of branching out and trying out different things as well. The wet palette is certainly good. It doesn't do anything other than save your paints. So like Games Workshop paints, that a lot of them are lovely, but they dry out so quick you end up using a lot of them to kind of keep up. So you have to keep depositing, but you still just end up wasting loads. Um, yeah. So the idea is is that it just supplies your paint with a little bit of moisture um, so that you can save it and, and, and use it. Yeah. yeah, make the most of the money that you're spending because it's not a cheap hobby. Most hobbies aren't, right? Uh, origami probably is fairly cheap. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there's always one, isn't there? Uh, I do find that when I'm watering my paints down, I've, I've noticed this over the last couple of weeks when I've been using it a lot with the Tyranids um, is that because it it supplies moisture from the papers underneath um, is that you can overwater your paints quite quickly so I would add in X amount of water on a normal palette to get the the viscosity that I require but that over a, over a period of half an hour would probably be too much water because it's being moisturized underneath by the by the, by the water in the in the palette itself so you have to keep an eye on that so I still try not to use too much paint in there don't try not to use an awful lot I've just put a couple of tiny brush loads in there now which will be enough to get me going yeah it's interesting it's just nice to play with something different right yeah I mean you literally our hobby is playing with toys so you've got to have the toys to to paint the toys yeah surely. um and I I was thinking maybe I'll upgrade to a to a, a nicer more compact one that might sit, but you know this this is doing me absolutely fine and I'm, I'm really grateful for the gift it was really nice and it's, it's just it's not broke don't yeah don't don't toy around with that the colours do separate a little bit over time. So, like in the pool of water where the paint has been sat, I've noticed that my greys kind of they separate, and I get like a a really really runny black, and then like a little bit of pigment on the side. But if you mix them, it just becomes the coloured water again. It's, it's kind of weird. That like, kind of like breaks the paint down into constituent pieces. It's really peculiar. But yeah, I highly recommend having a go. Um, and they're not all that expensive. You can buy some really expensive ones, but at the end of the day, they're just an airtight lunchbox. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> um, what I will say, that the only thing that I would really um, suggest for anybody who's, who's looking into getting a wet palette is get a shallow one. Otherwise, it's not doing you anything other than just having to reach over into them, and you can get them quite deep. Um, so just get one that's just like half an inch deep or something like that. There's, there's no need for anything else. Um, it just saves on, <laughs> you know, your posture and the position of it. Yeah. Mine, mine's a little bit too big to have on the worktop here, really, because I've, I'm, I'm quite an untidy hobbyist. I've got stuff all over the place. I can't really have it in shot. But then, as we've noticed, anything white on my camera here just gets bleached out anyway. So we're not missing anything. It's just paint. Don't worry. So well, here we go. How's this kind of fixing? So it's dried up your uh, your lines. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of seams on there that I'm not entirely happy with, but a couple of them are a bit better. So what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm not going to really worry about the areas where the um, where the filler is. I'm going to just kind of let that go overnight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick an area, and this is how I approach every model, and it's it's hard. Is you just go, I'm going to go left thigh. And that's all I'm going to worry about now. And until that's done, I'm not going to worry about anything else. I've done the block color, and now I'm just going to go around the outline now. So just on the underside of that carapace. And like any yeah. good any good painter, it might require a second go. And that's demoralizing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad to see it. it looks really good with the, uh, the forearms in grey. Do you like it? Last week about yeah, I was going to bring yeah, that up earlier. It, it does. It does really what smart. it does. What it's supposed to do, right? Makes him look a bit more yeah. beefy, a bit and more armoured. Really I'm going to do the bit between that that forearm okay. and the claw. I'm going to do that like a fleshy pink colour to make it look like all tendons and stuff like that. Tendons. Yeah. Um, so. You guys just have that, yeah, bit of a different colour on there as well. Yeah, my, my watch is going crazy. I've got an alarm on there to let us know that we're going to go to intermission. So um, I'll just uh, I'll put us in there. <laughs> we're waiting for an intermission screen. Um, we're gonna have a break in just a, a couple of minutes, um, but I've often noticed that whenever I go to intermission, everyone starts yapping away in the uh, <laughs> in the comment section. So I'll give it a second before we go there. Have you? Uh, you're talking like you've um, like you finished what you're doing, Kyle. I have, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I need to go on to a separate project um, in the second half. So during the break, I will. I might get out the deaf company. I think after I showed you, we had that chat last week about the first two layers of dry brush that I do on my Blood Angels, just the grey and the white. I think I might just go for that on my Death Company and see how they turn out. Do one and see what you think. Yeah, do one, because again, there'll be there'll be some other colours added in detail after that, because there's little bits of red detail and sort of bone off white colour as well. And so we'll see. I They're think gonna be painted in the same game. style, aren't they, as the other stuff? Yeah. I think I think, so, I think uh, it'll look think really some good. Of the details, yeah, I think some of the details I can do, I, I can potentially edge highlight and just have a little practice with that. Cool. Yeah, they've got sort of, they've got a lot of detail on them. The Death Company models, they're a really nice cast, and um, each one has lots of little details. I think I can, yeah, just be a little bit finer with that that work, and that will, I think it'll make them look really nice. And uh, that's the word I'm looking for. It'll just make them stand out that little bit more because I was in elite troop choice i know what yeah, you're saying yeah meant to be a bit more so yeah it should, should come up quite nice. well when we come back from the break then uh, we'll have a little look at what you've done because it's always nice to celebrate a little win right yeah it is, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we've both got units finished and that's that's really exciting um so yeah cool if you are watching right now uh, you probably need to have yourself a little break go get yourself a refreshment go to the bathroom uh stretch your legs or something you should definitely go and change your paint water so go and do that now uh, we'll have a break here for about 10 minutes and we'll see you back here in just a moment Cheers then. Bye.
and I'm back. For a minute there, I thought I just cancelled Kyle's call. So it took, <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> I just pushed across and I've got an awful habit of uh, sometimes pushing things that I shouldn't do. Um, yeah, welcome back from the intermission. Sorry about that. Um, let's bring some music back in there because uh, <laughs> I had a little mini heart attack. Oh, dear. Sorry, Kyle. Sorry, mate. No problem. Oh, look, he's, <laughs> he's, he's not even there in the screen. Can I Can I get him back? There he is. Phew. Oh, oh. dear, my days. So, uh, yeah, hope you had a, a, a less heartache-inducing uh, intermission than, than I just did. Um, so I did say that we had uh, a community spotlight and a shout-out to give today. Um, I'm really stoked about this because... I mean, you've been looking at the pictures during the break um, because obviously there's a little bit of a delay for you. Um, but it's absolutely stunning. So I was looking um, just through some forums. I thought it's been a little while since we've had a community spotlight. Perhaps I'll go out and see if I can find some inspiration out there to just to kind of give someone that kind of a bit of, um, bit of a plug. And um, I was looking for something that was a little bit uh, grim dark. I saw a little while ago some brilliant black templar space marines and they were done in a style that were really gritty but they were really realistic at the same time and they looked that they had a lot of um sort of homage to your style um but they were done um without uh, with less of the dry brush kind of techniques but they just looked really really good so i was looking for them and i didn't find them but in my search i found something just as good um, and I got in contact with that gentleman then and there, um, basically said, can I, can I please show these? I think they're fantastic. I explained a little bit about, um, easy eight and he was like, yeah, go for it. A absolutely, absolutely fine. Um, so I had a good look through his gallery on Facebook and I found these pictures. The first two pictures are the first picture that I saw. Um, so I kind of want to show everybody those, uh, and let's go over to the community spotlight here. So. We are looking at Commander Dante by a gentleman called Robin Mannion um, uh, via Blightforge, uh, which is his personal business. He has a YouTube channel, which I've not yet checked out, uh, but he does also have a Facebook page where his gallery is essentially. And this guy's work is absolutely stunning. Obviously, I was drawn to his style because it plays right into um, your themes of grim and dark and it's Blood Angels. We're looking at Commander Dante, who is the ultimate commander of the Blood Angels force, right? Yes, and of he's been given command of... I've forgotten it and I know that there'll be people screaming at me for forgetting this as a Blood Angels player, but he's also now commander of a large portion of the Space Marine forces. He's, the, I believe, the oldest non-dreadnought space marine? he's supposed to be the longest surviving um yeah. space marine for like 1100 years or something like that yeah. uh, various accounts vary um but basically he wears like gold armor has some really cool gear but this um particular model is um kind of uh kit bashed out of various other things it's kind of a conversion and you can see that the legs there are from age of sigma models stormcast models um what really draws my attention beyond the fact that he uses non-metallic metals um and to kind of get those gold colors out on the armor is that axe is absolutely breathtaking it is stunning i have never seen anything quite like it you can just for a moment forget about the osl lightings um yeah. down down the staff there but just look at the head of that axe actually looks like it's glowing with electricity and yeah it's it's incredible and it blew me away and he has painted this up and he was offering it offering it out um to buy uh on his facebook page um, and says if anybody else wants one so he quite easily knows how to make it again yeah. and to do it and it was just fantastic um yeah it, it's incredible I, again really really timid on the base that has a little bit of a story there got a little bit of broken earth like martian kind of soil those dust's going up onto the boots there or whatever but yeah look you look at the hair i think the hair on that is sculpted i i, I didn't ask him that that looks like it's all was all done oh, by hand definitely yeah that is, it's sort of draping over the armor like that yeah it's, like big. it's just incredible isn't it anyway um here's a shot even, on the back yeah and just even he's got that same sort of technique on the uh, inferno pistol as well just a few of the details yeah uh, it's again, just, yeah, just it's stunning like on the second photo, we can see on his back there, he uses the same sort of backpack as I believe the San Sanguinary Guard. Is that is that right? 
Yeah. yeah, that's one. So that's the sanguinary, sanguinary, oh, sanguinary. Sanguinary. Sang, 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 I, sanguinary. I tried to say it and then I ruined it completely. <laughs> sanguinary. God, there we go. Um, yeah, so it's got like the wings on the side of the jetpack, and the jetpack's got like, like that main central tear bind to it. You, you see a few of those around now, yeah. uh, but I just think that it it just looks brilliant. Um, again, like you say, it is that grim dark style. It's just everything's a little bit downplayed. I didn't realise it was non metallic, non metallic metal. Yeah. As well, it's unless it down. unless it is metallic metals, it certainly looks like NMN to me. Um, I didn't have that conversation with him. We we're just talking about each other's you know projects and stuff. So yeah, it just looks stunning. And if you have a look, it also is a little bit of zenithal lighting on there as well. So if you look particularly at the legs on the back of him, you can see that the calves, that the yeah. calf muscles, the tops of them are lighted, and then the rest of it's all downplayed in shadows and he's kind of edge highlighted and whatever. But what really strikes through that 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 dark palette is that cool blue color from the turbines it's not bright it's not in your face but because and we spoke about this so many times because of the use of the color wheel those cool colors are piercing right through from the warm set of the gold to the yellows and the reds and whatever so yeah that's yeah, really really playing into that you know what those colors can do for you anyway moving on from dante yeah I found this picture. This isn't an ultramarine. This is, I believe, from his Facebook page. It, said it was just a homebrew chapter. He kind of made it up, but it does look like uh, ultramarines because obviously the blue kind of colours in there. The reason I wanted to kind of show this one off here is because again, look at that halberd or glaive or whatever that spear thing is. It looks like it's glowing with energies. Like power weapons are supposed to be like um, ele electrified, so that they kind of have more deafness to them uh, <laughs> it's just a way of making things sound cool right but it looks like it's glowing and it's just a case of um uh you know using white predominantly that's one of the things i've been looking at plasma coils and things like that i showed you a couple of photographs during the week yeah. that we were talking about is basically you use like a white background with white inks to give you that intensity white and then you put light washes over the top getting darker and darker that wash will run into recesses and away from the white the white gives you the kind of brightness the heat if you like from the electrical current or whatever it might be and then yeah it just gives it that color it's absolutely fantastic again grim but not too dark, too gritty. It has that. It's all is played right down. The focus there, of course, is on the on the glaive. I think it's beautiful. I did pick up a few photographs today, by the way, as well. <laughs> so this is another one here. I believe it's a Blood Angels. I didn't um, go and find out what chapter this was. Um, it certainly looks like a Blood Angels very, guy. Very, very Blood Angels. And he's got a huge yeah. glaive with a gun on the end of it because you know, what makes glaives more dangerous? Put a gun on them. Yeah. Why not? Um, I chose this one to kind of just uh, pick out and have a chat with just because I really like the edge of that uh, the, the, that glaive. It's kind of got that pink glow on it. Um, I just like... Because we were talking about a couple of weeks ago... Um, like doing synthwave things and you know like like tron kind of landscapes and things like that i just thought it looked really nice and it was a nice pink color and it wasn't doing the whole blade like what we see yeah. on the on the on the other two it's just that it one that, yeah just on that one edge this little bit here really dangerous <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and you can tell because yeah it's brighter you know i like it no i really do I really like that model. We were speaking about this before. It's still very much that grim dark style. Yeah. But he's still uh, used some quite bright colours in it, which is quite nice to see that just because it's grim dark doesn't mean every colour has to be muted. Yeah. It's just about using that colour a bit, bit smarter. Really yeah. Just and that stir. red, if you look at that, that, that red's really quite orangey as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's definitely using some oranges in there for the highlights. And again, that zenithal lighting is coming out, even on that model, just looking at the legs and sort of the underside of the wrist holding the gun halberd shooter. I've noticed in the but, comments section yeah. now, we've got a little bit of a conversation going about issues with the, yeah, with, with the live stream. I, um, I was struggling, but I know my internet's been struggling uh, a little bit today. Um, so, Jeff, try clicking the live button uh, under the next to the pause button yeah um and it kind of jumps you ahead but no i was struggling at the start as well but my internet i think everybody where i am seems to be on the internet pretty hard at the moment yeah um, same, same here i don't think there's any problems are on either of our computers streaming at the broadcast here it's probably just local networks um i've got a couple of messages for drop frame rates but nothing too alarming and my cpu usage is the lowest it's been at the moment for the entire evening so um yeah just just keep on going um 
Melibrox put in there. Had, had you well, frozen, well, but it has cleared now. Okay, good, cool. Well, as long as you can see what it is that we're looking at here, anyway. Cool. Moving over then. Uh, this one I picked up because it's all space screens, space screens. Until I found this chap here, which is a completely um, uh, converted Phoenix Lord for the Eldar. Uh, I just wanted to bring it up to, say, to show you that um, not only does he paint space screens, but he also does other races too. Again, really, really muted. Nothing particularly bright. Nothing that stands out so much on there. It's all about the whole piece. It's got a really nice flag on the flag. It's really hard to paint. Um, I like the muted tones on the on the cloth, etc., and really nice colours there as well. It's a really pretty model. Go and have a little look at that one on uh, on Facebook. It's a um, shame actually because that model i think would have suited a bright contrast somewhere potentially on, yeah it could have been on the base it could have been some sort of glowing fauna uh, or flora or something like that or the weapon and i think j just to sort of lift it uh, don't get me wrong it's it's stunning model it's it's magnitudes better than i'm ever going to achieve in my life and uh, it's a fantastic and beautifully painted model but just having seen the effect on his other models with that glow. I, think, I know what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have something that brings your eye to it, which is yeah. why I've chosen this next model here, which is, um, I believe, a Plague Marine, like a Chaos Marine, a Nurgle Marine. Um, and again, I just chose this one because I thought that the um, the lighting on the plasma coils and that plasma pistol there are just stunning. And again, a pink color, uh, which we don't often see on plasma coils. Traditionally, they're done blue. I've seen a lot of green lately. Orange has made a bit of a, an appearance in plasma coils, but the pink really stands out. And I think that those choices of colors on those muted um, pallid greens and those um, kind of off whites on the actual marine himself uh, combined with the pink on the on the plasma pistol is just absolutely stellar i just saw it instantly i was like oh look at that that's absolutely brilliant because we were talking about plasma coils in the week uh privately i just thought that'd be a nice one to bring up and show absolutely stunning and then i believe that the last model i've got here i just thought again because it was all marines and everything else is that he does he does so much stuff on there here's a, a really nice skitari walker the scout one walking in the snow um some really uh, you know nicely muted colors uh, just blends really nicely with the landscape the model itself does all the kind of standing out i just thought it was absolutely stunning this gentleman is robin Mannion. i do believe i spelled his, his surname wrong it's got two n's uh, before the i uh robin Mannion on, on blight forge uh robin um has his own gallery on facebook i will put links i didn't get a chance to do it before the show started because i was only talking to him just earlier on today um he said he was going to come along and watch the show. So, Robin, if you are watching this now or later, hi, nice to see you. And uh, hopefully you get uh, to see my face uh, behind the, yeah. the texts that we were having earlier on. Um, Robin does... Um, all sorts of commission work and gallery work through Blightforge on Facebook. He also has a YouTube channel of the same name. I will put links up to it all. Um, he also is UK-based. Kyle, he lives within arm's reach of you. He is literally, you could lean out your window, shout, hey, Robin, and he'll probably be walking down. The, and he said, because um, I mentioned that we got a co-host, um, he said, when it's safe to do so, give him a shout, because he'd love a game. <laughs> Look oh, at that. Fantastic. Isn't that wonderful? The community is oh, growing. So Rob, Robin's uh, painting skills are absolutely fantastic. I really do recommend that you go on over to Facebook and YouTube and have a look at his stuff over there. Obviously, uh, you can have a chat with him and get him to commission something. So if you're fed up with painting all of your work, um, then maybe you can source some of it out to him and you know that you're going to have uh, a really nice centerpiece uh, to your army. So yeah, head on over. So that's Robin Mannion at Blight forge you can go and look at him on facebook or on youtube but let's come away from here for now because it might be that uh this has been causing a lot of our problems i'm gonna head over to you and i here we are yeah it's a little bit clacky that little bit a little bit weird never mind if you are experiencing problems do let us know uh there's probably not an awful lot i can do if it's um just you know network or you know internet um but if you're experiencing any other problems do let us know um, if you are joining us right now uh, for the first time, uh, you can see here that we've got other platforms to go by. So you've got Facebook, we've got Instagram, and of course we've got YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe because every little bit helps us out. Uh, and uh, hopefully you guys are getting things done. I've done a lot of talking, Kyle, uh, yeah. but you had some success just before we went away for the intermission. Yeah, I am um, I'm quite happy I got my... I got a five-man squad finished. Well, not finished. The, the detailing still to go, and I've got a base of all my models. But I'll do that pretty much all in one go. I yeah, think. you said you're going to do your basing a little bit later on, weren't you? But for yeah. all intents and purposes, 
a, a second unit finished. Yeah, a second unit is pretty much there now. Can uh, we get a look? Can we look, get a look at the guy, the yellow Let's helmet? See. Is that is that possible? I'm going to give oh. you the whole screen, Kyle. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh! Hang on, I've just walked away. There's ah. no hang. There's no hanging on, mate, for the live show. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. The yellow helmet is on. That's good. Yeah, we, go. we can see him. We were saying uh, in the break, unfortunately, due to the quality of my camera uh, and lighting and things, that they they don't just they don't get the justice. Yeah. Uh, Via, via the feed but I will get some pictures up I've been saying that for a very long time now but I've almost sorted out my social media to uh, to be able to be a bit more active uh, on our Facebook front as sure. well so I will get them up and it's been you know it's been slow progress but that's my third unit now uh, which is more than I've ever painted uh, for one army so I'm I'm very pleased with that's it it doesn't matter if it takes you forever. The fact is, you're actively going through it. Look how long it's been taking yeah. me to get these own soaps done. I was hoping to get them yeah. done tonight, but I'm, I'm really struggling with this base. <laughs> it's not it's not doing what I wanted to. It wasn't working as well as the other one. But I've just done that leg on that Khan effect, so he's good to go. I'm going to put another layer of green on this acid base and see if I can get that to play ball. Um, yeah, you know, unit's done. After these zone thropes, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to focus solely on this Khan effects for a little while. Um, I've got some bases to neaten up on my Termogens, which are my, my, my horde critters with the guns. Yeah. Um, and then I'm kind of done for a little while with Tyranids. Um, yeah. I'm oh, going to so probably, yeah, next week I'm probably going to, I just want to do a little bit on my, on my Panther. It's been sat there, all the wheels are all kind of separate and I just want to do a little bit of work on him. And I think that to really give him some justice, I might just kind of do him over, over next week, maybe over the next couple of weeks. Um, if people don't want me to do that and they want me to steer more into, you know, games workshop stuff or, or other things, then please do say, uh, I've got all the projects that are all mine are all very personal to me. I'll do whatever, you know, I, I want to do, but if you want to see something different then, then let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about doing the Panther bit next week. Um, I've got other Tyranid stuff, um, but I, I think I'm, I'm almost at the point now where I might buy another unit. Oh. I know. I've got um, an old um, Hive Tyrant from sort of third edition. So he's like the plastic body, but metal head. Yeah. Uh, or maybe it is a metal body and uh, plastic limbs on him. Uh, I quite like the older style uh, Hive Tyrant with the, the Queen alien style head uh, yeah. over the newer one. I prefer it. I've got a Forge World one as well, but that's for later when my techniques are kind of honed in. It's a really nice model. It's super rare and expensive now. So I want to make sure that I'm really good before I go to that one. So I might do that one as the next thing. And then I might be looking at buying some miniatures. I was given um, a box of Hormor Gaunts uh, for a Christmas present from a friend a little while ago. Thanks, James, if you're watching. <laughs> um, but I don't want to go into another horde unit right now uh, because that's not what my Crusade army needs. It needs something like a pair of lictors. So I might go and buy myself something new um, to play around you, with there. Um, you tell me you put lictors into your Crusade force. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not in my force yet, but the Crusade, is, the Crusade force is definitely needing it. And one lictor by itself isn't really good enough. Um, so having a pair of them is often better. Three is often, especially at the lower point games, probably a bit too much. But yeah, having one, it gets shot and killed. Having two, one gets killed. The other one goes and decimates your entire enemy force. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to head on over to the workbench again. Boop. Yeah. There it is, it seems. Cool. Uh, I'm glad that it looks like that we're operating back in. This is an amateur show, man. You know, and and uh, it's it's just one of those things that I like to I like to bring back up again. It's it's just me working out of a little dark corner of the house that I that I'm in in lockdown, um, and it's been it's been breathtakingly fun uh, and really positive to run this show, and it's, it's an honour, really. It really is. And and Kyle, you're doing it on the back end of your really really busy schedule we've got so much out of it but it is it is an amateur setup and sometimes stuff's going to go wrong and i like that i like the fact that it's live and that you just can't iron out all the things if it's if it's recorded I like the fact that you can see it all as it happens um but obviously if it gets too bad you've got to let us know um and over the over, over time we were just talking about this in the interval it, it is going to get better we are going to get better um and hopefully we'll be able to afford better equipment as we go so apologies if it's really effective you this evening or it has done it in any other time in the past but that's just the way it goes i'm afraid so i'm gonna put just, a bit more a bit more green I, here i've just seen the, the part of the show where i showed my model uh that's just come across my screen and uh it was just pretty much entirely dark the whole time so i apologize for that uh, uh, you can see any colors there you also got to see my super high budget uh 
garden chair as well there as I, I moved around <laughs> to get the model. <laughs> this little yeah, like, captain as chair. Says, it is an amateur show. I'm I'm broadcast out of a bedroom on a on a camping chair. Uh, but yeah, it's just been great fun. It's been the the best thing for me. Number one, I absolutely love just being able to chat to people and, and that side of the show. I've really enjoyed the community side, but. The fact that I just know every week I've got two hours. I don't have to worry about trying to carve out any more time. Anything extra is a bonus, but I know I've got that two hours on a Friday to get, to get a little bit of project work done on my uh, on my miniatures. It's been fantastic. It's great, isn't it? Love it. Yeah. What is everyone painting this evening? <laughs> I wanted to give a big big break after Adrian tried to steal my thunder. <laughs> So uh, I thought I'd give it a good long break. I was, I was wondering. I yeah, was like, I in the break, has Adrian put him off? Yeah, no, I thought if I say it too soon, it'll look like I'm copying Adrian. And uh, so I thought I'd, I'd give us a good good break in between it, just to see what people are up to this evening. Uh, obviously, I'm uh, on an intercessor squad, assault intercessor squad. Um, I'm just trying to think what people were doing last week. I know, I think I don't think Luke's here today. He was I don't think so. No, he's doing some Sisters of Battle, but he was potentially looking at uh, a diorama. Together a diorama. Going to Blood Angels, smashing yeah. up a, an alien or something, wasn't he? Yeah, perfect, as it should be. Uh, Rude. Adrian, you're normally, you're normally sort of well into some projects. I know you, you tend to have quite a few on the go. Mellabrook, have you finally finished off the heavy weapons for your bikers? Are they done yet? What's happening? This, this should be the episode that finally sees stuff done. Yeah, a good I, finishing episode. Be nice to um, be nice to kind of get some photos up of your intercessors, Carl, on the on the Facebook later on. Yeah, yeah, I'll get I'll get them up. Um, mate, I'll even have the uh, suppressors in the background, which is the first two that I did. Yeah, that'd be nice. See the the cohesion between the, in the army. Very nice. I will try and get the last. I, I say this every week. I'll try and carve some more time out of the week to get some work done. Um, you always end up over committing every time you say yeah, that. Yeah, every time. Um, but I'd like to get those finishing touches done on the unit that I did this evening uh, and get that a picture of everything I've done so far. Um, Adrian is working on the panther. Um, panther yeah, or tiger? I'm sure he said panther. it was a tiger. I know he's going to move on to the tiger too. Um, so work on the panther. I'll be able to follow or gain inspiration for my tiger too, especially the nice. colours you use. Oh, I think he's asking you to work on the panther song. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah I'd love work to. On the panther, I'd love and then to. That'll help him with his inspiration. Uh, cool. The tiger too. Well, in that case, mate, that's what I'll do next week. Then is I'll I'll, I'll go over to the panther next week. Nice. It's something you've been wanting to do as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a nice break. I, I love 40k. Like I said last week, it, you know, it's it's pretty much my life. You know, <laughs> it's, it's 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 one of the funnest things that you know. People have their favourite books, whatever. Forty K, the law and everything that goes with it, the game, the making their models. I love it. Yeah. I really get a chance to nerd out in it. Um, <laughs> but it's not everything in the world, is it? It's not there, there's so much other stuff out there. I was just trying to think, just talking about that, about books and things. I know it's something we've spoken about before, uh, always good for inspiration. And obviously this channel is about a safe space to come and do your painting, so it doesn't all have to be, you know, it's not a tutorial, it's not all about uh, product review as well, it could be about anything. So if there is just something you've done, uh, sort of a good book that's given you some inspiration, chuck it up there, we'll have a chat about it. Uh, we've talked about some of our inspirations in the past, we're sort of alien and starship troopers. And oh G yeah, like, we got very excited about that conversation. <laughs> I saw that there could very well be, it looks like, there's going to be a Starship Troopers TV show in the pipeline. That has that has been a plan for, for a while now, yeah. Um, nice. I should imagine COVID's probably put a bit of a rain check on a lot of these projects. There was um, talk of there being Alien 5, directed by Neil Blumkamp, um, but it was completely... Um, like the plans for it were completely shelved so that's a bit of a shame um yeah what can you do uh, neil blumkamp uh has said that he is absolutely dead set on making district 10 <gasps> yeah so there's something for you um what did they say at the end of district 9 how long was it going to be till he came back i i can't remember now five it years was... Yeah, it was. We're definitely well over. <laughs> we're yeah. definitely well over what he said. 
Um, oh, Jeff just popped up uh, and said uh, he went through some old boxes in the workshop and found a drop pod of yours. Oh, thanks. That's, uh, be that's, a, that's a nice space marine thing to do there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I saw an interesting battle report recently with uh, with drop pods, uh, a full drop pod and a force. They are still, if not sort of mainstream, completely competitive, still very much viable as well. The old drop pod. It's I, like, I like a drop pod. Yeah, I've never dabbled in them. I've always liked the idea behind it. I just never had the money to sort of switch my force over to drop pods. Do you know, I had in one of my old tournament forces, um, I had a drop pod um, dreadnought. Um, and I used to call it my winning dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you, it was creative. back in sixth edition, I think it was when you could put um, a twin-linked heavy flamer on one side, and then you could, which you can't do now, uh, and then you could, you, like you still can, you could put um, a standard heavy flamer on the other side with a power fist. Um, and basically stick it in a drop pod, land it. Drop pods don't crash and burn. They just kind of get repositioned. So you're safe to go wherever, really, unless you literally can't fit it on the board, which is a tactic. Um, and then you just open up the doors and you just put flamethrowers on people. Um, and then it either attracts a lot of attention and gets taken care of, which is fine because they're not shooting at other units, um, or they don't and then it follows up and charges into you and then it destroys everything else. And it's so hard to beat um, that I actually stopped fielding it because it took the mick. <laughs> um, people were getting quite annoyed about it. And even in tournament games I play because they're friendly tournaments, I don't want to annoy my friends by fielding such jammy, jammy units. Nice to do it once in a while I go, look what I did, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I took him out. Uh, unless I was going up against another army that I n knew I needed to take. Um, but some of my friends who I was playing against started fielding um, units specifically to deny area. So literally like spreading out units as far as they can because you can't put the drop pod down um, in an area occupied by units. You can't land on them um, because what it's carrying is often dangerous enough um, to balance the game. <laughs> um, so they just basically take massive units and just fill the whole side. So the idea is that you drop down behind enemy lines. Um, but they, they, they st my friend started to um, understand that and just basically covered their whole deployment air, you know, zone in areas with their units, or leave a nice little pocket, which is really tempting, followed by uh, you know, uh, which is filled with um, anti-armor unit. That really. <laughs> pushes the annoyed button pretty quickly um but yeah it was the, the, drop, the drop pod I, i've never really used it an all flop for troops um what i do like is um a razorback which if people don't know what a razorback is is basically a little apc it's um you get the rhino which can take 10 people or the uh, razorback can take f uh, six but it has like a turret on the back of it and i used to put a couple of um stone guard veterans in there Stick a heavy flamer on the top, like hanging your twin link flamethrowers, or um, mini guns like assault cannons, and then yeah, just get the twin assault cannon, um, twin assault cannon uh, turret. Huh? Yeah, um, I, and I really like that, and I, I really liked using them as a uh, that because the, the, they're an elite unit, the the veterans. I liked using it as a. Um, a a do or die sort of go and acquire the the objective put it in the back of the apc and on off you go uh, and often died horrifically but we don't play competitively like that we play narratively and i like the story element to it i just thought it was really really fun i've noticed that luke has just joined us in the live chat hey. hi luke nice to see you uh i hope you are okay and that you've just yeah. been quiet for various reasons and not yep. that anything bad's happened that's what he's just said, yeah, he's just been uh, getting through the skin of a former gaunt. Uh, he's just been really into his painting, but he has been here for the whole show. Oh, yeah. nice. Thanks Hi, Luke. Uh, we've had a few more comments going as well. Um, Adrian said he is working on his Thousand Sons. Uh, one more squad to go. And he'll have army number three complete. Oh, I would love to know what it feels like. Just have one army complete. So fair play for being almost at number three. Uh, and then Mellabrook has said he he's Windows loading bar done. So 
technically 100 <laughs> percent that's pretty much what we're at right finished. we're just doing yeah. bases yeah, yeah. that's a brilliant yeah. <laughs> that's a good motto yeah also, better than banana bread <laughs> banana bits uh He's uh, go for some experimental flight bases. Uh, let me know how it goes. I know we spoke about Yeah, I'd like to see some photos of that because we were talking about flight bases last week. Yeah, um, yeah I would like how to see. I, I like the idea of them just tobogganing off the table and seeing what happens that way. But fine, <laughs> you want them to be based properly. <laughs> um, oh, it, it just the conversation we're having about drop pods just reminded me of a few things. I remember when uh, Blood Angels could deep strike a land, ro uh, land raider. Oh, yeah. That was phenomenal because you could just pack Dante and his his Death Star into a Land Raider and then uh, deep strike it, which was absolutely ridiculous. I just love the imagery it paints of trying to drop a tank out of a plane. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Straight For those people who don't know what a Land Raider are, are, it is, it's a really big APC, it's really heavily armoured. And it's a nightmare on the table if you're facing it. Um, I remember in one of the tournaments that I ran, um, I had an Eldar friend and I had a Space Marine friend and they were playing against each other. My other friends came to watch it. I adjudicated it. And um, the Space Marine player had uh, Terminators, which are really hardcore Space Marines, uh, armed to the teeth with everything to really stick it up them and then um, in a land raider and they would just normally would just drive forwards decimate everything in front of them with flamethrowers and miniguns um, and then just charge these guys out and, and that would be the glass cannon tactic the Eldar opponent saw that was like this is very upsetting the table was laid out where they had to go lengthways um, and there was a main street down the middle the Eldar player set up all their artillery, all their guns, everything down there. When they're gonna come, they've got to go the long way. They've got to come down this road. I'm gonna funnel everything I've got into them and hopefully shoot them out before they get here. So the uh, land raider then just decided not gonna go down the road. It's not gonna play the game that he wanted to play, and it went straight through all of the buildings down one side. Just drove through all of the ruins. Came out the other side and went ha ha, and then almost won. It was. How that Land Raider got destroyed is a story for another day, but yeah, Land Raiders, they just drive through buildings, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly what, they, it's what a tank does. That is. It's a really, yeah. really big tank. Yeah. It, it also brings me on as well, the idea of Razorbacks. Again, it's something I've thought about, but I love mobility, and the, I, I, that's why I love jump packs. And the reason I sort of steer clear away from drop pods and Razorbacks and Rhinos is they have great mobility, but once you disembark, you're then back down to your kind of standard movement. And I just like the idea of it's a faff being able to move that much. It's a faff to to get them out, to get them back in, in and whatever. Yeah. So it's a very early game strategy. Get that Rhino or get that Razorback up there as fast as you can. I like to support it with jetpacks or with land speeders, etc., so that it can go and fulfill a function other than just taking the fight to the enemy. It's there to deliver collectors, you know, to go and either claim that 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 point or to go and get that objective, whatever it's going to be. Put it in the la you put it in the APC and get back, whatever it might be. Um, but support it with other fast-moving things be it like guys on jetpacks or guys on land speeders and things and it worked really well for that and I, I i kind of tried to bring a little vietnam style to my space marines um so you know like helicopters or you know that that kind of that concept of uh, fast moving rapid attack do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. 100%. So that's yeah, that's 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 what I try to get because I play Raptors, Space Marines, and they're they're basically jungle fighters. Uh, they're often called um, reasonable, re, re, uh, reasonable Marines um, okay. because they don't have like garish um, heraldry, and they're all about you know being very deliberate and sensible. So they yeah, they they actually practice shooting. Yeah, yeah, they're like excellent if you marksmen. The 1D4 chair, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I'd like to get onto doing some Space Marines on the show at some point in the future, but I really just wanted to give my Tyranids some love because, you know, other viewers won't know oh, um, that over the last few years I've, I've, I've done a lot of Space Marines in tournaments and things like that. Uh, you know, home tournaments, nothing uh, official. Um, but it's nice to come back to my uh, my first love, which is, which is Tyranids, and to kind of get a little force I've, up and going. I've never played against your Space Marines. Uh, ever since I've known you, you've kind of been on your 
bit more of a tyranid yeah. uh, wave, as it were. It'd be nice to... I've, I've seen your space boots, definitely. I've seen the raptors, they look fantastic. Thank you. But it's, it's been more interesting, because I've played a lot of Blood Angels, it's been more interesting that you've played Tyranids. Is it me, or do the Xenos races not really get an awful lot of love? Oh my gosh, it's it's not just you at all. I mean, I don't, obviously Tau being quite a new race to Warhammer, they got a lot of love when they came out. Um, and they've had a few, you know, they've had some new sculpts as well, uh, sort of the Ghost Keel. Um, yeah, it's really nice that actually. Breachers, uh, the Riptide, things like that. It's made their original suits, I think, look quite dated. Sort of yes, suits, I absolutely I agree. They look very blocky. Yeah, don't they? They, yeah. they need a good up, update. And obviously the breaches uh, added a bit more to the the look of the fire warriors as well. But God, they really do. The amount of people that play the Xenos races, you look at Eldar, they're almost always competitive uh, in tournaments. Yeah. Uh, and, and how little love they've been given. It's, it was like... nice to see them actually progress the Eldar story. A, a bit more yeah um, whether people like that or not is, whether people like that or not it was nice to they, see development yeah you mean they can only be a dying race for so long uh, yeah it was my thought behind it if you're going to keep these in and, and have people want to play them you need to get away from i think the dying race narrative um it's just it's been done cool let's give them a bit of yeah. hope let's give yeah them well, somewhere to go let's let's inject don't kill them off people. because they're too good they're too good yeah. to be killed off yeah, I, I think it would just really polarise the game a bit if you got rid of a force like that. And they're such a fun and interesting force to play. I know a lot of people that understand the game a lot more get a lot out of playing Eldar. I know that we spoke about this before. They're, they're not your your standard beginner army. You, you have to know how to play They're, they're extremely elite. More. They've all got very specific choices and they all fulfil very specific roles. And that's it. If you want yeah. something out of them, you don't have a tactical um, fallback in a particular unit. You have an anti-armor unit. You have a stealth unit, and, and that's what they do. They specialize. Yeah. They are called Aspect Warriors for a reason. Yeah. Tins are clues on the tin there, isn't it? It really is, yeah. So, uh, my base is going a bit weird this time. I don't know why. It's just the actual paints aren't really moving the way i want them to so it's just taking a bit of time to manipulate it and try not to rush it i'm just trying to kind of layer it up bit by bit and something that you that you can do with glazes is you can go back with darker colors so i can get my dark green out again or i can go back with my sick green one of carl's favorites um and you can just mix it yeah you can mix it up with a little bit of um medium and you can make a glaze and you can just kind of darken it off you can reinforce um darker you know uh, tones and things um so i might have to be doing that quite a bit um it's been a bit weird i don't know why it's doing it maybe it's just because it's quite a bit colder in this room today uh last week it was um, really quite warm and by the time i put one paint down it was drying um but we'll see, we'll see what happens it all changes when you put the gloss on there and then i often halfway through the gloss layers i put like a dark glaze back in and then i do a couple more layers of gloss over the top and that really sets it off so you can see here that looks so much more different than than this one i'm really fond of it it's, it's one of my one of my proud moments that I, I i did this kind of liquid thing anyway enough of showing off i thought not this this show is all about so yeah i don't really know what to do going back to this soil color over here if i go back to my original zone top it doesn't have any acid base on it at all um so i've got the cracked earth i really like the cracked earth um but it's this um I've, I've missed a little bit there i need to get a little bit more in there but it's obviously it's it's not painted it has its color um so i could just leave it if i wanted to but it's a bit lazy and i've been um, accused of lazy basing in the past by just putting sand on bases with my space rings and leaving it because sand sand right but no yeah. it, when, it, when it's a model it needs to be painted because everything else is so I actually i saw something on that as well uh, with using sand uh, on bases if you really want to a really simple technique is you put your sand on and then just hit it with a uh, some known oil uh, just to bring out that shape right. uh, and it makes it look a lot more to scale on the model as well okay that makes sense I, mean, I did try on my original ones by putting um a ghrelin earth sorry agrax earth shade which is the the dark brown wash 
shade. Um, I've got sepia and, and Aragrax together. We've, um, there we go. I just, just want to say as well, uh, the bait has worked. Um, we've talked about the Eldar, and the Eldar player has jumped in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, there it is. A uh, couple comments, actually. I'll just have a chat about them now. Uh, Agents popped in. The Rhinos APC and the Razorback will be classed as an IFE. You are correct. Yeah. Razorback is an infantry. Um, Fighting, fighting vehicle, vehicle uh, it is but most people know what an apc is it's yeah called. it's exactly why to the masses um but yeah no 100 right it is nice yeah it's like it's like the scimitar in real life yeah and yeah. the warrior it's yeah a fantastic bit of kit for those of you that know that i don't like um tanks you not like main battle yeah. tanks but he doesn't so mind armored like vehicles tanks, but yeah. armored vehicles have a fantastic place uh and then our eldar player bait going in look um <laughs> that was in the days of haywire why cut through armor when you could just emp it to death great point that was referring back to your story of the uh yeah the land raider coming down the, not coming down the road and then the, the next comment is a fantastic eldar comment and it's definitely been mirrored in a lot of the, the sort of forums i've been in the elder have now forgotten how to make them alongside the codex shift away from their elegance and technology of a brute force approach to be imperials but lighter and faster i i, I get what you're saying they seem to have lost a bit of their flavor they sh they're meant to have technology that vastly outstrips the imperials uh, and it just doesn't seem to be following that trend i'm hoping this codex shows it with the way that even the weapons in the imperial codex have gone I've got fingers crossed to see some a, a good shift for the Eldar going back yeah. to their older ways of what what they should be te technologically superior. Um, and then yeah. Adrian Town need updating. Uh, try playing guard. I Do it, bro. Guard. Seriously, yeah. Like I agree. Guard. Like they, they they all need like at least yeah. one new unit, right? And the thing um, with the guard that's really good is they they've got a lot of stuff that is really good. They got like a lot of tanks. And it's all about having tanks and then swathes of inf infantry units with it. Yeah, they, they could do with a couple of new things just to just to keep it going, just to keep it a bit yeah. brighter. Um, but the Eldar, uh, for sure, they've had their Guardian squads, their, their main you know, rank and file um, updated. They had some weird little shoulder antenna. Good for them. But the 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 basic sculpts behind all of their aspect warriors are being cast out of really poor quality resin, quite frankly, the yeah, fine cast. But they are still the sculpts that were used for the lead models back in second edition back in 1995 um so yeah they have got some newer stuff recently no i don't like it <laughs> personally <laughs> personally i if you're if you're a harlequins player uh, if you're the the new breed of eldar on top uh, the, you know the 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 new thing oh, in the yeah, yeah then that that's that's cool um i'm a big fan of the old school craft world, craft world stuff yes that's what i really like a uh, dark eldar as well i've got a place um they're not really for me but i I like that um I, I like their uh the concept of like that pirate raiding force of, uh, that's something that speaks to me it's not really a force that i ever want to go to but their raider which is the, basically their um troop carrier that is very reminiscent of return of the jedi um yeah, yeah. i like that yeah. as a model and i've seen people do that up really well and it's always inspired me to want to do it i don't think i ever will because i've got so many other things to, to do but Yes, yeah, it's it's it's, re it's really nice. It's really cool, and I like a lot of their concepts. They're supposed to be really hideous. Generally, though, the differences between Dark Eldar and Craft World Eldar—they've got their own different names now, Drakari and Eldari, I think. Now, um, they they're supposed to be quite difficult to understand the differences if you're just a normal lay human you know like they're all eldar they're all space elves um but if you know more about them you'll probably get executed because that's the dark sense way of the imperium or if you are an eldar yourself you'll know that one side's very evil the other side's just arrogant and aloof <laughs> uh yeah I, li I like all of that i think i think that's really cool it's good um Luke's just put in a great comment. Uh, the Eldar troop choice, the Guardians, are actually older than he is. Uh, really? Those sculpts, yes, they are. <laughs> those poor Guardian models, just they all just need some love. Game, yeah, games they Workshop do. Have to know that people buy things other than Space Marines. Surely. Surely they, they know do. This. I mean, I know they got, and they're still old. But I'm just thinking maybe some of the Wraith units are probably have got to be some of the newest models, and maybe they're flyers. Yeah. The, um... Obviously, they've had they've had some planes, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, I like I like all the planes. I like all all the planes that um, that all the races have. The the tower ones are the ones I'm not so favourable with. But even I think they're, they're... Tau. they suit yeah. Tau. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I yeah. think my standout flyer is the guard. I think the Valkyrie. Valkyrie is just, just a fantastic model. I also am a big fan of the Storm like Talon gunship, Space Marine one. Um, yeah, I like that one. Um, and I've got two. Uh, one's half done because that's what we, you know, that's what this show's about. It's about. <laughs> yeah, do you know? Do you know? Anyway. Uh, one of the things I will do in, in this show when I do my space means is do up the second one that's unfinished, make it new, and then one day I'll go back to the other one and I'll bring that one up to it as well. Yeah, you know. um, yeah that's yeah. Um, we are just a few minutes now from finishing the show. Um, I can't finish this base in time; it's just not drying. <laughs> so I've There's got my I've got my airbrush. I'm just blowing some air on it. Uh, if I had a hair dryer, I don't really have an awful lot of hair. If I had a hair dryer, I could have um, done this guy a while ago. But I want to get some gloss varnish on there just to see what the colours play like. Um, but that that gloss varnish is not going to dry before the end of the show, I'm afraid. Um, but when they are done, I will post photos of them up on our Instagram page. You can see it down there in a the corner. Um, and I will put it up on Facebook so you can all see whenever I put something up on, on Instagram, it goes straight to Facebook as well. Um, although sometimes I do keep content just for Instagram because you've got to have a little bit of uniqueness for each one. Yeah. Uh, Gloss varnish has gone a little bit dry around the spout there. Uh, and don't forget, if any of you do use uh, Instagram, if you tag your pictures with uh, Easy Eight uh, OPC, we will see them as well, and they will we'll be able to access them through the Easy Eight Instagram page as well. Brilliant so have... to know. Tells you what a technophobe I am. I did not <laughs> know that. So nice. That's great. Yeah, if you at us at them, we'll, we'll see them come up. And it'll Brilliant. Be like the same idea as Facebook. We have that sort of community idea to it. We can share share all our pictures of our voice. We do actually have a really active community on on Instagram. Um, people who we talk to quite a lot on there, um, and all of us, the people who kind of share it, review each other's work, and, and you know, like and tag and whatever. We all we're not constantly up there all the time we're not putting up photos every day or once a week or whatever and um, they're not influencers they're literally people that are up there just sharing their work because they enjoy it and they want to see what stuff you're doing so yeah there's, there's none of that kind of influencing sort of lifestyle on on easy eights instagram which is really nice so just going in with a little bit of gloss um, overall just as we come to the end of the show again i'm happy uh, progress has been made again this week just a little bit at a time chipping away um by the times we see each other in real life we're actually going to have yes. painted armies aren't we i will have a, at least a crusade force painted a 450 that is that is the goal that is my goal at the moment my long-term goal first long-term goal to get to is my crusade force painted ready for when we can actually get together and have some crusade fights so it's nice to have that i'm ticking off i've got those in my smaller goals unit by unit um i'm getting there i'm getting there i've been thinking again about my my lieutenant model which is going to be the last thing i do as i build those skills up but i've been collecting bits for it it's getting there what happens afterwards pardon i move what on to my next and then move on to my next goal daddy but we Which... don't think about that goal until we complete this goal. Okay, so it's not like you've got a goal after that or anything. I didn't. It's not like you've got a goal set up for it. You just. It's... No, I don't want. I don't want to get just. I know what I'm like in this hobby with getting distracted and moving around armies and mm -hmm. bouncing around. So it is. I just want one goal on the horizon. I'll get there, finish that, and then I'll move on. Fair enough. Yeah, but I know if I go. Oh, after that, I'm going to do my guard. I'll then get halfway through this and go. Ooh, I could do some guard now, and then the <laughs> Blood Angels will get pushed back again. So it is just Blood Angels until that goal is finished. That's that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So what is it you're going to bring along next week? It's going to be Death Company. Death Company. <laughs> going to try yes, and carve out a little bit of time during the week. Hopefully this weekend. Hopefully. That'd be nice. Weather's well, supposed to be bad if you're here in the uh, the sunny southwest of the UK. Yeah. It's it's not very sunny at the moment. It's cold. It's wet. It's really windy at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. I, still will, I still will be outside. Uh, I will get outside for some of that weekend, just because uh, it's raining. It shouldn't, shouldn't keep you indoors. We're no, waterproof. absolutely. Uh, we're, no, we're we're outdoorsy people. Let's get yeah, let's get outdoors uh, and then straight back in. Yeah. And then straight back in. And yeah. And then do some <laughs> and then do some painting. Um, 
I would love to see what everybody has been up to this evening. If you have achieved goals or if you're just, like Carl says, just chipping away. Put some photos up on Facebook. I'd love to see what you're doing on there. As soon as these guys are done, I'll put these photos up on Facebook. Um, and I'll also include links to everything that we've spoken about this evening. Um, if you know anyone um, that has a private business or you've had a really good experience with a company and you want us